Hello developers, welcome back to the programming fields. Today I am going to start a new playlist on Laravel 11 design patterns. So this is our first video. So welcome to the first video in our Laravel 11 design patterns playlist. If you have ever struggled with messy code, hard to debug logic or just wondered how to take your Laravel skills to the next level, you are in the right place. In this series, I will teach you not just to code but how to code smartly. We will explore patterns that developers around the globe use to write elegant, maintainable and scalable applications. So today, we are starting with the why behind design patterns. And by the end of this video, you will understand what design patterns are, why they are crucial for Laravel developers and how they improve your projects. So don't forget to stay until the end. I will share a bonus tip for choosing the right pattern for your project. So let's start what are design patterns. So design patterns are proven solution to recurring problems in software design and you can think of them as reusable template and this is mostly used to tackle common coding challenges. For example, instead of reinventing the wheel every time you manage database queries or user authentication, you can use patterns to streamline your work and you can consider it just like a grammar of a clean code. And this helps you to communicate effectively with your team and your future self. Laravel, with its expressive syntax and robust ecosystem, this is the perfect playground for implementing these patterns. And Laravel supports various design patterns. So I will explain you everything in this video. Next, we will say why are design patterns important. So it is important to know before using any design patterns in your project, like why design patterns are important to use in your project. So these are the reasons why design patterns are essential for Laravel developers. First thing we have scalability. So as you know, as your application grows, patterns like repository and service ensure your code remains manageable. Next we will talk about maintainability. So the design patterns enforce separation of concerns and this makes it easier to debug and extend your application. Also this helps in team collaboration. So if you are following a standard patterns, this will make your codebase familiar and accessible to other developers if you are working in a team. So just imagine if you are building a SaaS platform and without using patterns, the management of user roles, billing and features become tedious to manage. But with the patterns, each responsibility is isolated and easier to manage. Next we will talk about how Laravel 11 supports design patterns. So Laravel has inbuilt features like service providers, middleware and eloquent models. Laravel 11 takes modern PHP development to the next level and many of its core features align perfectly with popular design patterns. So for example, if we we'll talk about the repository patterns, so this works beautifully with eloquent for abstracting database queries. Also this supports the service pattern. So the service pattern is easy to implement using Laravel's service provider. Also this supports the observers and by using observers in Laravel, this will allow you to implement the observers pattern easily. Also we have the singleton pattern and factory pattern. So if you want to use singleton pattern, this will be used in the service provider to ensure a single instance of any classes. And you can use model factories to test and save your database. By combining Laravel's expressive syntax with these patterns, you will write clean, professional grade applications. Now we will talk about very important aspect when to use design patterns in your application. So not every project needs every pattern. Here is a quick guide. Firstly, we will talk about small projects. So let's suppose if you are creating any small kind of project, in that project, you can use patterns like factory for testing and seeding. It will work with the minimal design patterns only. Now if we will talk about medium level projects. So in that kind of project, you can use repository and service pattern for scalability. This will enhance the code reusability and scalability and you can manage it very easily. And if you are building any large kind of projects, then you can incorporate multiple design patterns together. Just like a strategy, singleton and observer for modularity. So just remember, the goal is not to over-engineer but to apply correct patterns where they genuinely add value into your project. Now we will see a quick example of messy code patterns versus organized code example. So here I have taken a quick example of messy code. 
here we have a controller as user controller and this is extending the controller class inside this we have the activate users function inside this function we have called the user model query and we are fetching all the users from the user table which have a status inactive all right next we have added the for each loop over the users and we are updating a status active okay now if you will try to understand this entire code here we have used direct query in the controller itself and inside the controller we are fetching all the users next we are iterating those all users and we are updating the status one by one for every users which have a status inactive so here we have two things to be noticed firstly we are using query directly in the controller next we are writing all the business logic inside controller itself so according to the design patterns we should not write any direct query in the controller and also we should not write the business logic inside controller itself the controller code should be neat and clean and it should not show the all business logic directly in the controller also we cannot reuse this query here because we have directly added inside the controller itself so let's suppose if we need to fetch all the users having a status inactive in other place then we will have to write the same code again in that function as well so this will increase the code redundancy all right and also here we have the performance issue because we are iterating the users record and we are updating the users having a status inactive to active one by one so this is a small example of this messy code here and this is just for the understanding purpose now we will see how we can organize this code to make this reusable and that will be very optimized so here we have the organized code example of that same code this is the user controller so here i have used service and repository pattern so in the service pattern we will have a separate class for managing all the business logic for this particular user module and inside this user controller we have called that user service here we have the constructor inside this constructor we have invoked that user service and next we have a function as activate users and inside this activate users function i am calling another function which is defined inside this user service so through this user service object i am calling this function as activate inactive users and let's take a look to this code here so here this function does not show what is going to happen inside this function and here it is not revealing what kind of functionality has been defined inside that okay so this is the controller basically now if you will take a look to this user service class inside that we have the definition of that function okay this is the user service inside this user service we have called the another class as user repository so this user repository will be responsible to handle the database things like database queries okay and here we have the definition of activate inactive users function and basically this function was called in the user controller all right so when the request will come to the controller that will come inside this user service using this function and from here again i am calling another function as update status and this update status function has been defined in the user repository class and inside that function we are passing two parameters first parameter is inactive status and the second parameter is active so the first parameter specifies like this has to update those users which have a status inactive all right now let's come to the user repository class here we have the user repository inside this function we are receiving two parameters this is the current status that we are passing to update the users and we have the new status that we want to update for the users and here we have written one query to find all the users and here we have added one where condition to check all the users having status as inactive because in the first parameter we are receiving the previous status that we want to update so in the first parameter we are receiving the status as inactive and in the second parameter we are receiving a status as active so according to this query this will check all the users which have a status inactive and here we have used update function so this will update all the users which have status inactive to active all right so here we have organized the code in different functions as modular approach if we we'll take a look again 
Here we have the basic code example. Here we have used direct query in the controller and also we have written the business logic to update the users. Now we have separated this code in very organized way. So we have used service class and repository. So in the controller we have abstracted the business logic and we have separated that in the service class. Inside the service class we have written this business logic to update the users which have a status inactive and in the repository class we have communicated with the database using the user model and we are updating the status based on the given parameters all right so this is the organized code example here now we will talk about benefits of organized code so the design patterns help separate concerns just like controller service and repository so this ensures clean and modular coding approach because in the example we saw we have separated the business logic and the database logic by maintaining the service class and repository class also this will be helpful in better maintainability so by writing the code in the organized manner the code becomes easier to read debug and extend as responsibilities are isolated for example if you want to change the database logic only this will requires updating the repository not the entire code base all right also this will enhance the reusability of the code so the patterns like service and repository encourage reusable logic across the project for example a user service can be reused in multiple places in your project just like controllers jobs or commands also this will improve the scalability of the code so the patterns ensure your application structure can handle new features without breaking existing functionalities for example if you are working on a payment gateway modules and if you want to add new payment gateways using the strategy pattern then you can scale your code base without having any difficulties also this will improve the testability of the application so with the clear separation of logic each layers like service class repository class these can be unit tested independently all right and these won't affect other modules while testing or while using the code and the last benefit is like collaboration and consistency so let's suppose if you are working on a large project across your team then teams can easily follow a common architectural standard and that can improve the collaboration for examples the new developers can quickly understand and contribute to the project by following the coding principles all right so this is all about the quick demonstration of laravel design patterns today you have learned the foundation of what design patterns are why design patterns matter in your project and what are the benefits of having organized code in the next video we will dive into our first design pattern that will be the repository pattern where i will show you how to simplify your data access layer like a pro so if you found helpful to this video please don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated for the upcoming updates and here is your bonus tip of this video always start with the simplest pattern that solves your problem because complexity can grow in your project over the time but simplicity is always the foundation so thanks for watching see you very soon in the next video until then happy coding